Welcome back to the channel, you crazy diamonds, you fantastic veg-tastic people out there, scattered globally around the world. Right, this is something completely different. And I was in two minds whether to put do a video on this, and I'm still not 100% sure, so this I might be wasting my own time here. So you know that in amongst all the other jobs and tasks and little projects I'm doing, I've sorted out my sea fishing gear. Uh, we did have some uh, fishing, tackle that was, fishing tackle that was suitable for when we used to fish, I'm talking about a decade ago, on a, on a fishing boat uh, in the sea. Now I'm not planning on going to sea again, but I do want to do, I'm, I live in North Wales, so I'm, I'm inundated with coastal locations of where I can go beach casting, as they call it, or fishing off the beach, beach casting. So I've been sorting out my fishing tackle, which some of you might want to know, some of you might not want to know. But I've been looking at doing some research and whatever, and I've been looking at what bait we're going to be using to try and catch some of these fish. And a common bait are the big, I don't know whether they're called logworms or ragworms, the big worms, well hopefully big, that's optimism isn't it? Uh, the big worms that burrow down into the sand on the smooth beach and you see a little bit of a worm casting and then you'll see the anglers go around with what they call a bait pump and they push it in at a certain location, at a certain angle, suck the lever, pull the lever back and suck up a worm, hopefully, and then depress the lever and it pushes out all the wet, sludgy sand and hopefully throws a worm out with it. Now, that is a skill in itself which I'm going to try and do. That'll get me down on the beach, that'll get me some fresh air, lovely. But I needed a bait pump. And before I show you this one, I wasn't going to go and buy one. Uh, I thought there's plenty of people out there who were making this bog standard type of bait pump. So if you're interested in what I'm going to show you about how to make your own or how I'm making my own, Carry on watching. If not, don't worry about it. I'll see you on one of my other videos. But while I'm here, I'm still plugging my books. I'm still plugging my seed sowing book for sowing my vegetable seeds, my Happy Days Veg uh, Planner, and also, more importantly as well, well, not more importantly, but equally as importantly, my new book on, a, it's a power blackout guide. I'll leave the link to all those three books somewhere throughout this video. Do me a favour, go check them out, get your hand in your pocket. I know you've got short arms and deep pockets, but get your hand in your pocket and order one off Amazon. The cheapest chips and the blackout guide will make your life a lot easier in the event of a power failure. Let's get back on to the topic of this video. Right, for those who don't know me, my name's Sean, and I'm predominantly, I say predominantly, Happy Days Veg. We grow, try and grow as much of our own veg and soft fruit as we can. So this is going to be completely different from our usual views, but who knows? So, a bait pump, and you're saying, Sean, and those who have clicked on this video because they've seen the, they've seen the, uh, the thumbnail, bait pump, yeah, they'll say, what on earth is that? And it's bent there, Sean. What's going on? And it's blue. Right. Before I show you this, let me just tell you a couple of things. Everybody's making these bait pumps out of 22mm copper plumber's pipe. Yeah. And all I want to tell you is this. It might look very coppery, yeah? But there's not as much copper in there as you think, right? And plumber's pipe, it's very, so, so easy to uh, put a dent in. Now, I've just noticed a dent there, look. Right, just be careful if you put your finger in the end of the pipe, because if when you cut it off, it's razor sharp. This pipe's very, very easy to damage, right? So, hence the reason that I've just made this, because this is the only piece of copper pipe I've got. I've just slid this protective slide over it. This is 32 mil. 
MDPE, medium density polyethylene pipe that I got left over from a gardening project. I just slide that on there. And because because that comes on a roll and that's naturally bent, I've straightened it out a bit, but that goes on there like a, a, a sword sheath uh, and it will stay on there because it, it's curved, so it's holding itself on. Then that way, when you put it, when I throw it in the back of the van, it's protecting the end and if anything hits it, hopefully this will take some of the blow without denting this. And the reason I'm saying that is because of this. In there, there isn't one at the moment, but in there there's going to be a silicon bung that is rubbing on up and down the inside of that pipe to create a decent seal. So when you pull the pump out, it creates a vacuum and sucks up the wet sand and the worm. So if you've got any dents or any kinks in this pipe, it's going to affect that the, the it's going to affect the ability of that silicon washer plunger whatever you want to call it to slide up and down there nicely so check your pipe check if this is an old piece of pipe but check your pipe before you buy it that there's no dinks or kinks in it and i tell you for what because this is costs a fortune and they're rubbing i nearly swore then they rub your blind yeah now when it comes to bait pipe i know what i'm talking about because i was an air conditioning engineer and if i was still in the trade i'd have used seven eighth uh, straight drawn half hard 7 8 which is a lot thicker wall a lot stronger and five times the cost but I wouldn't have been planning on paying for it myself if you get me drift anyhow so how does it work in there there's going to be a, a silicon silicon washer that I'm in the process of I'm just waiting for them to set We'll worry about that further down the line, but I thought I'd do this video to show you. Everybody is making this tea piece here out of a 22 mil equal compression tea. But what I've done, I don't think I've got, have I got another piece here, sure? I don't think I've got any more here, have I? Just a sand, no. Right, what I've done is, I bought two fittings. I bought a, a 22 mil equal compression tea in the UK. That's cost me just that cost me six pound, six pound sixty eight. I mean, they, they've I can't believe how, how priced they are. But what I did, I bought one that hasn't got a compression there. There, it's a thicker fitting and it's got a half inch thread in there. And that's the one I've used. And I'll tell you for why, because that there. is your handle where you're going to be pressing it into the sand and if you're just pressing down on, on, on your copper pipe on that compression fitting you know I weigh 17 and a half so there's going to be a lot of weight pressing down on there even though it's going to be with my weak left arm yeah the chances of that lasting in there constantly pressing it down without fracturing a slim because it's only thin pipe so what I've done is, I don't think I can get this off now, because it's, oh, I can. What I've done, oh, let me see if you can see what I can see. Yep. What I've done is, this is a piece of 20 mil electrical, electrical metal conduit. It already comes with a thread on the end, and this was an offcut about a foot long. I've screwed it into there as tight as I can, and then I've brazed it with me, with me, uh, oxygen and propane brazing kit in there right and then it just so happens that 25 mil mdpe pipe slides over let me just bang that on there slides over there to give you a nice nice handle to hold on yeah that way you're not holding on to a freezing cold handle and that there is a lot more solid than just the 22 mil copper pipe. Now, I appreciate not everybody's going to have the facility to be able to braise that in there. I appreciate that. So go ahead and use a 22 mil equal copper tea. But this is the only, this is the very first one I've made. It will work, but 
obviously I'm expecting a couple of teething problems because when you're doing a bit of research and development, you're always going to get teething problems. Let me have a sip of my tea. Only if you're new here, I've got one rule. One rule and one rule only. No tea, no work. Right, we can carry on. So, so that's how I've made a more heavy duty handle. And then there's a short piece of copper tube there. And on the end of there, there is this section here. This is a, this is a compression reducing fitting. It reduces the pipe from 22 mil down to 15 mil pipe in there, yeah? So that's a 22 mil to 15 mil compression fitting. And in there, I've taken out, I've taken out the, uh, what looks like a little brass copper ring, it's called an olive. And I've put in one of those, which is a half inch normal tap washer. This packet, you get five in a packet. Yep. Yeah. And that, you take that off there and then that goes in there. And, and the more you tighten that up, the tighter that will squeeze in. Oh, obviously, you've got to re-drill that hole. Luckily, there's a hole in the centre to get you going. You need to drill that hole to suit the size of the pipe, just a, only a millimetre or so bigger than the, the, than the metal bar you're using. In this case, this is 8 mil. I think this is 8 mil bar, yeah? 8 mil mould steel bar. So that goes in there, and that allows your bar to slide in and out, and it holds it perfectly central, and it just stops the anything rubbing metal on metal. So that's that in there, a half inch tap washer. Now let's just talk about the handle. A lot of people get another piece of copper tube, drill a hole straight through and use eight mil threaded rod which you don't want to use threaded rod because it's going to, it's going to act like a file because it's rough and it'll just, it'll just wear your washer away and it'll end up grinding it and it'll do your head in. So you want to use plain metal bar, but a lot of people use threaded rod because it's easy because it's already threaded. And then they drill a hole straight through the copper pipe and put a nut and bolt on either, uh, two, two nuts and washers on either side. Same again. That poses a problem. You'd have a nut, you'd have a nut sticking out the top of there, and then you'd have a nut under there. So that's gonna press on your hand and it's gonna it's gonna catch your fingers. So what I've done is this. I've got another piece of I haven't got any spare, have I? Oh I have, stay there. Is it this is a this is a stuff, stay there. So what I've done. So it comes with a thread on. Anyhow, so what I've done is this. I got that off cut. And I drilled a hole straight the way through, big enough to take that. And that is an 8mm threaded rod connector. So basically it's got an 8mm threaded hole going straight the way through there. And they're designed, they're designed to put on the end of a piece of all thread. So you can through, put another piece of all thread there and extend it, yeah? So that's called a, a, a threaded rod connector, 8 mil. They come in 6 mil, 8 mil, 10 mil, 12 mil. Well, they come in all the sizes, but them are the basic ones. I try and keep everything I do, I try and keep it either 6, 8 or 10, depending, because that's what I've always used. And then I drilled a hole through there. I measured it and I cut some off with my hacksaw so it sits flush. And then, same again, I use my welding gear to weld it in. And then, once I welded it in, I, I fold it smooth, sanded it smooth. <clears throat> I drilled a hole in, in the centre of this plastic and then put some fairy liquid in to act as a lubricant, slid some of this, this uh, pipe, slid some of this pipe, over it until the holes, the holes lined up. And then I just screwed that onto there. So I've got, 
the best part of an inch of thread in there, holding that ant mill bar there. And if I was to put a pair of pliers on there, I could just unscrew that at the handle off, if need be. So that is how I did the, the handle. So, I think what we need to do now is, oh, hang on, before we take it apart, Right, let me just show you something else while it's, it's easy to see. Right. So, I've made myself a stopper there. So, just, just ignore this, this rubber disc there for a moment. You've got to have some kind of way of stopping it, yeah? So, I just got a 10 mil nut, slid it over the bar, and welded it on, and while it was still slightly warm, just forced this piece of rubber. I got these off, off some plastic pallets. They've got a hole in the bottom. Let me get you another one. Let me show you another one. I haven't got many. They're rare, they're rare as rocking horse poo. Yeah, these like rubber feet. They were in some bottoms of some rubber pallets, plastic pallets, yeah. And they've got that hole in there, indentation. And what I did, if you get a 10 mil nut, which is easier said than done. A 10 mil nut, you can force a 10 mil nut into there. Yeah, it's tight, but you can force it in. Hang on, look. I've still got my bionic powers, look. You can it's not all the way, but you can force it in. And that means you've got about an eighth of an inch of rubber between the knot, between the bottom of the knot and that face there. So it can't go, it can't go any, it can't go, that can't go down, that can't go any further down because even if that plastic wore out and broke off, there's still a 10 mil nut there. All that's there is to make it a nice, sound so it's not metal on metal it's rubber on metal and then while i was there i thought right just to make it look good and protect my little hands because i've only got soft soft contractors hands i'll put another one there so now i've got plenty of space even if i'm wearing gloves to get my hand around there that's smooth it's not cold like holding cold pipe and because that's nice and smooth there that's not going to affect my fingers that'll give me any blisters there so that is how I've got that as a stop. So I think what we should do is we should take some of this apart and let's have a look on the inside. Right, we're back. So this is what it looks like on the inside. This is the uh, this is the inside plunger and it consists, it's made up of eight mil. This is eight mil stainless steel threaded rod. It doesn't have to be stainless steel, but what you've got to understand is it'll rust, which doesn't really matter. This is just happens to be eight mil stainless uh, steel rod. Another eight mil threaded rod connector some eight mil mold steel plain bar that you can buy from, if you're in the UK, you can buy it from uh, that, big, uh, that big DIY store, the big orange one. I'm not gonna mention them though, because they're robbing, they're too expensive for my liking. Anyway, so here I've made two plastic uh, plastic don't know what you don't know what to call them really I've made two MDPE high medium density polyethylene basic tough washers that fit inside there yeah not too tight though I'm gonna tell you for why because I'm, I'm making, hopefully, a tube, a big tubular blob of silicon sealant 
that is going to be squashed, put in there and squashed in between them two, just squashed enough so it fits inside that 22 metal, uh, 22 mil copper tube and just tidy with these uh, nylon, nylon lock nuts, tidy it up so it squeezes it together like a sandwich. So when it bulges out, it's just bulging out enough to be able to pull it back in the pump and it's tight enough so it creates a vacuum to suck up all the wet sand and hopefully these big worms. So this is adjustable. Now, just let me talk about these. You think I'm crazy, but just let me tell you about these lock nuts. I ordered, now a lock nut, for those who don't know, a lock nut, can, can we see? Right. A lock nut is just like a, a normal nut here, sure. Normal nut. Normal nut. Right. There is just a bog standard 8mm nut. A locking nut has got a, a nylon insert in there which helps to prevent the nut from coming loose. So I bought some lock nuts, I ordered some lock nuts, and when I got them out of the bag, look how thin that one is. Now, anybody who's not used to using nuts and bolts will think, what's the problem with that, Sean? Well, I'll show you what the problem is. Look at that compared to that. See the difference in thickness? Yeah? There's hardly any, there's hardly any nylon insert in there, where if you make sure you get the thicker nuts, which I bought these today, I picked these up from tool station in the UK, yeah? And I'm pretty sure Screwfix will have them, and I'm pretty sure B&Q will have them, but make sure you get the thick ones, because they've got a better nylon insert. So that's my, that's my rant over them, done. So, 8 mil stainless steel threaded rod, 8 mil lock nut, a little 8 mil washer, not really needed, because of this, this, these plastic bushes I've made. Another little washer and then another lock nut. So when it, all this is put together, this is about quarter, quarter of an inch, half inch inside the pipe. Yeah, so I don't know how thick these little bushes are gonna be, but I'm gonna, however thickness they are, they're gonna be right on the end. So that's gonna be the silicon washer side. Then, because I didn't want to use threaded rod, which is rough and it's got teeth on it, going in out my washer there, because it'll be too stiff and too awkward to pull in and out, because the, the threaded teeth would be catching on your washer, I bought some 8mm bar. Now, luckily for me, this is leftover from a knife sharpening jig. Yeah, so, but you can buy this in metre lengths. I know B&Q sell it. I'm lucky, I've got my own. I did have it there somewhere. I must have put it away. I've got my own cheap tap and die set. So with an 8mm uh, die in the end of it, uh, I'm able to put my own thread on the end of there. Now this is where this, this is gonna cause a lot of problems because up till now, up till now, Apart from brazing that handle in there, let's say you're going to use the normal copper handle there. Up to now, all this is easily done with just a couple of hardly any hand tools. But I'm able to put the thread on there. So I've threaded it there and I've screwed that in. I've also made myself a, uh, another plastic washer there, slightly tapered, and that's threaded inside. So that's screwed on there first. That's screwed up to that and it's all tightened in because that there is designed, I'll show you, to catch on that spring there. So when you're pulling the pump up, it's slightly spring loaded. So when you feel that tension, you know you're at the end of your, at the end of your uh, pumping stroke. And that is just so when you when you when you're pulling it up, you've got a bit of a you've got a bit of springiness 
bit of resistance instead of just hitting metal onto metal. Yeah, that's what we're trying to avoid. Now, you can say to, <coughs> say to me, Sean, where am I going to get a spring from? Because let's face it, it's hard to get a spring. I mean, what you ask for? So, let me show you what I've used. This is called a channel nut. Or, we call them Zebedees. After a cartoon character, years ago on the Magic Roundabout, he had a big spring, didn't have legs, he had a big spring, boing, Zed Zebedee. So we call these Zebedees or Zebs, but they're called a channel nut. And you can get them, that's a, a, a big spring, or you can get them with a smaller spring. You want one with a big spring. And I, know, I can hear you saying, where am I going to get one of them from, Sean? You need to go to a proper electrical suppliers, like CEF or people like that, who sell uh, this kind of gear. You can buy them off the internet, yeah? It's called an 8mm channel nut. And that's the spring I've used. So I've just pulled the spring off there with pliers. Don't use your fingers, use pliers. Because it makes you cry if you just use your fingers. I've pulled the spring off there. And that is inserted in there. But... That's the spring, and that's the size of the hole. I wanted it. I wanted the. I wanted it to stop there. I didn't want anything to come. I didn't want this to come past there. So that springs in there. But the problem is, it's too. That hole in there is too big. So all I did. I got a. A hole cutter, or I call them starret cutters, but they are, they're called a hole, hole saw. I call them starret cutters because one of the top brands of these, the, the, the brand is called starret, yeah, but it's a, it's a hole saw. Get one as near as damn it, yeah, and you end up with, not this particular one, but this is just a, a, for demonstration, is you'll end up with like a washer that big, and then you've got to, File it down until it fits in there and it catches on that lip. Now the secret is this. Here's a little, here's a little tip. Drill it. Slide it onto an 8mm bolt. Because let's face it, we, we, it's, oh, it's all 8mm that we're using, yeah? Get a cordless drill. Yeah, now obviously the one you're going to use is going to be bigger than this. This is just an off cut for demonstration purpose, demonstration purposes. So I'm, I'm not going to do it properly because I haven't tightened that up. But you tighten that up with two spanners, put it in your drill, get yourself a sanding, a foil. Uh, but I prefer to use this rough sandpaper uh, because when you're trying to foil, <coughs> foil, Plastic, it just clogs up your teeth in your file. And then when you turn the drill on, you're using that as a bit of a, a thingy bob, uh, like a bit of a lathe. And then you can just sand it down, yeah? And keep on checking it and checking it and checking it. Do it bit at a time until you get the right size. But my, my tip is this. Don't worry too much about trying to make it to fit perfect in there. If you make it tapered, yeah? If you make it tapered, it'll naturally fit in there, yeah? So instead of trying to get it exactly dead flat and, and the right width, if you make it slightly tapered, just drop it in there, job done. And then what I did, this video is gonna drag on, isn't it? But what can you do? What can you do if you're trying to design and make something? So we just imagine that that is the right one. Then what I did with my spring, I got the end of the spring and I bent it up. Then I heated the end up and I pushed it through so the spring melts a hole straight through there. 
comes out the back and then while it was still hot I bent it over so now that spring that spring was is fixed in there yeah that spring is fixed in there and the the piece of plastic is going to be held in by the pipe that goes in there now don't get me wrong <clears throat> You could have that spring loose and just leave it going up and down, but you need to stop it going further than there. But I fixed mine in there, the way I just told you, so it, it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, rattle around and drive you mad. So, my second video will be how I've made these silicon bungs, silicon washers for this end. So we know what we're doing there. We know what this is, we know what that is. That's a threaded rod connector, 8mm. That, that is if you're using 8mm. And by the way, 8mm is more than ample for, for this kind of thing because everything is doing, everything's on a linear plane. So what I'm saying is this, you press, you press it down, you're pressing the pipe into the ground and you're pulling out at the same time. Everything is held in the centre of that pipe. Yeah, that's helping that little disc there is helping keeping it set centered this will be keeping it centered that's keeping it centered so it's working on a linear motion yeah we're not going to be bending it so eight mil is eight mil is ample for this project so we know what that is eight mil stainless steel threaded rod but it doesn't have to be stainless steel because that's not stainless steel and the problem with stainless steel is it's hard to cut it's hard to file yeah so i just stick to normal bog standard Thick 8mm locking washers, nylon washers, 8mm threaded rod connector, the spring off an 8mm channel nut. This, I know you're not going to have these, but that can be that can be anything, yeah. You can just you can just weld a nut on there or have that, you don't really want it all threaded. You've got to put something there to stop it uh to so you don't, you're not hitting your, your knuckles on there every time, yeah? You need some kind of stop on there. Now, I didn't want to thread it all the way down because that would make that rough for my fingers. So that's why I welded it on, yeah? So let's put this end back on. That slides in there. That slides over there. That slides in there like so. I'm not going to do it up too tight because I've got to take it apart again tomorrow. And then, a good test is when you do that, I can't lift it up dead vertical because of the, the roof. I want, you about, I, want to, I want you to be able to see. When it comes out, yeah, you can see it's got that, it's got that, uh, that buffer of the spring, right? Now, the only other thing I did was this. I drilled, once it was all together, I drilled a hole in there. So you can get some kind of lubrication. Now, th this is something else I want to talk about. But you can put your lubrication in there. This is what I thought, to, to give this pipe a little bit of lubrication. But then I thought, Sean, you're stupid. Why don't you just get your lube, pour it on there until you get a nice little moat and little rim of lubrication on there. And then slowly but surely, just twist your handle round and just let it drop. Yeah, perfect. So you don't you don't need that lubrication hole. This hole is this is still open to this. So when you're sucking up, the air that's in that pipe inside that pipe has got to go somewhere. So it'll come out of there. It'll also come out of the gap there, but that's why we have an opening there. So that's that's it up to now. So that's a nice solid handle with a plastic pipe on there to keep it uh, so it's not as cold and it's the right size for your hand. Nice handle in there, threaded. This, as I say, with a pair of pliers on there, I can unscrew that handle off there. Yeah, that's a nice buffer. Perfect. So let's just talk about lubrication. I'm not going to be using oil. 
obviously you're going to go down on the beach so you've got to think about you know hopefully fishermen and people like that who, who go on the water not just fishermen but everybody who uses the beach and the water and anywhere else just try and be slow i know people don't want to really environmentally friendly but just be a bit environmentally friendly so don't get using bloody oh, like this is this is just engine oil that i use for nuts and bolts and hinges for this i'll be using one of these bottles but it'll be my now bear with me it'll be my washing up liquid now my washing up liquid is called Ecova, I think. It's plant-based, environmentally friendly. And the reason I use that is because my house is not connected to the main sewerage system. I've got a big septic tank and septic tanks work on bacteria and microbes working away in that tank. If you put fairy liquid down there, which is fairy liquid, brilliant. We've, we've all been washing our hands with fairy liquid forever, haven't we? And it takes off all the grease and all the grime. It's brilliant stuff, but it's bad for the environment. And if I was to put that down my sink into my septic tank, it would kill all the bacteria and then my septic tank wouldn't be working properly. So I use Ecova. It's plant-based washing up liquid. Yes, it's not as good as the other brands. I'll grant you that. Yes, it's a bit more expensive, but life's a bitch. What can you do? But it doesn't matter if it goes on the beach or in the water, it's plant-based, so it's good for the environment. That's why I use it. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using one of them to put some lubrication down there to make that go in and out. Well, it goes in and out perfect, you know. So, but that's what I'm going to use. And then everybody says, oh, well, don't have one pump, have two, because if one breaks, you're going to be going to be stuck aren't you well i'm not making two yet i'm quite happy with this design uh i'm gonna i need to take i need to, once i finish the bung i need to go out and test it on the beach but if you did want to take it apart to change the bung or to clean it out with a bit of water let's say it got clogged up for whatever you are going to end up having to take a couple of adjustable spanners with you and then uh for in there you're going to need some 13mm spanners because an 8mm nut and an 8mm bolt takes a 13mm spanner. Uh, and then what, what else I'll take is I'll take a, like a long 13mm socket to put in there to be able to uh, to be able to tighten that. Look, if I, can you see that? Yeah, that's connected. This end's connected to that. So I'll be able to, you'll be able to hold that and just with your socket, tighten that up ever so gently just to adjust the thickness of that silicon bung in there to give you the perfect fit to create some suction. So, I hope, this, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I know it's different to my normal videos, but that's what I've been up to today, amongst other things. Yeah, logworm, ragworm, I don't know what type of worms they are. Suction bait pump. Yeah. How much would it cost? I don't know. You'll have to do the maths yourself. Copper pipe's expensive, so if you know a plumber, try and get some off him. But make sure you need a piece that's got no dents in. That's the secret, no dents. And this end, you want to use the nice flat end. Oh, how do we cut all this? Well, because I'm an ex-air conditioning engineer and pipe fitter, I've got an abundance of tube cutters. So I use a tube cutter. And I also use... I don't know where all these tools go. Oh, here it is. I'll put it back. I use one of these pipe reamers. Right, I use one of these pipe reamers, and this pipe reamer, you put, I don't know if you can see, you put it in there, you just turn it round gently. Yeah, turn it round gently. Put, got to put a bit of pressure on though, and it just reams the edge of this end of your pipe so hopefully you don't damage this pipe too much but if you did damage the end of this pipe instead of replacing the whole piece of pipe you're better off just putting in a compression coupler yeah and 
and then just cutting cutting the end off, ream it out, and just put it back quarter of an inch. You can always adjust the, the position of your uh, plunger in there. Quarter of an inch isn't gonna make any difference. So that's that. So let me know what you think in the comments. Good and bad, I'm open to criticism, yeah? Some people might say, Sean, it's over-engineered. I don't care, that's because I'm an engineer, yeah? It's not gonna break. And I know there's some things there that some people can't do, some brazing. So as I say, use your, use your, your tea and have a copper handle. If you can't braise a nut on there for a stopper, don't have a stopper. Just be mindful that you'll be, if you're not careful, you'll be pressing, you'll be banging your knuckles on there. That's why I've put that stopper on there, yeah? Uh, what else do I know? Yeah, any questions, let me know. And if you think I should have done something that I haven't done, let me know. But I mean, as it goes up to now, I'm quite pleased with that. So until the next time, Happy days. Go and get the kettle on. And I'm hoping to do a video of trying to get some worms with this. I don't even know whether it's the right time of year, but them worms don't go on holiday, so they must be there. But I think they're going to be just deeper down. Oh, and talking of depth, from what, I've, from what I've seen, nobody's really gone over. You know, some people saying, oh, I'm going down eight, nine, ten inches. I might go down a foot in the winter. As it stands, I can go 14 inches there. Yeah, 14 inches. You can work out what that is in millimetres yourself, because I'm old-fashioned. 14 inches. I'm not planning on going any deeper than that. Yeah, but because because that end is made of threaded rod, it's all adjustable. You can take that out. You could extend the pop, have a longer piece of pipe, and you know make this longer. It's all adjustable. I don't know who said it first, but I'm going to steal the saying. It's not my saying. I'm just quoting somebody. Uh, if you can't make it perfect, make it adjustable. And this, my friends, is fully adjustable. So until the next time, take care, and I'll see you guys later. Time for a cup of tea. Happy days. Man's a genius.